Welcome to the uh, Corporation of Town of Kirk Lake Finance Meeting of June the 5th, 2018. Uh, approval of the, of the agenda. I have a motion that's moved by Councillor Morgan and seconded by Councillor Roman that Council approves the agenda for its meeting of finance held June 5th, 2018 as presented. All in favor? Approved. Any declaration of pecuniary interest? None declared. Petitions and delegations? None. Reports of municipal officers and communications? Wolf and Jose, take over. Thank you. Um, this is the first time that I've ever had to present a budget to municipal council. So I promise I will do my best, but it is my first time, so please be gentle. The, I, I will take the responsibility for making the presentation. I will defer questions uh, that are certainly beyond my ca capacity to Hosea, and staff will be called upon to answer questions as may be relevant. For the people in the audience, I want to make clear that this is a presentation to council and the copies of the presentation so you can follow along are on the side table where you came in. There will be an opportunity later, uh, I think it's on June 12th, to go through the other budget documents in greater detail. I'm not showing them here because I will be focusing on the presentation. But if you need them, uh, they're available from the website. As well, just let us know at Town Hall. We'll make sure that you get them on the 12th or before. Any questions to that point? Now what? <laughs> what did I do? This is not the way it's supposed to go. <laughs> Just want to say that. There we go. Okay. 2018 budget deliberations. Purpose of the presentation. It is to summarize the financial operations of the municipality in 2017, as well as to propose a preliminary operating and capital budget for 2018. There will be a refresher on calculating taxes, and I'm sure that will be the most Im interesting part of the conversation as we proceed. For an agenda, I'm looking again, so I, I, I struggle with the process because it's not a frame of mind that I naturally have. I believe there's a lot of people that have gone through this in the past with us, so I thought I would put in some of the key definitions and the process of how everything goes, works, uh, what are the terms that we're going to be using and what do they mean. Then we'll hit the 2017-2018 uh, uh, executive summary. It provides a framework for understanding everything else within the presentation. 2017 year in review, operating, and capital budget, a game bird's eye view. We'll go through the reserve, the reserve funds and the working capital position. It's in the uh, handout, you'll be able to see it right there. 2018 preliminary budget will be the operating first and the capital. Any comments? And then we'll turn it over to the tax rate discussion. I'm not going to read the definitions, but generally, these are the terms that you're going to be seeing and her, uh, hearing about. Operating, day-to-day, -day. capital, longer-term projects, usually one time. The municipality itself has, operates more than one budget. There's water, there's wastewater, et cetera. It's, it's a complicated process, but for tonight, these are the only ones that we're talking about, the day-to-day -day operations and the capital. Reserves and reserve funds are two terms that you will hear all the way through the presentation. They're often confused. Okay, reserves, it's a commitment. A dollar commitment that you're going to put aside, but it's not a dollar. Reserve fund, that's a specific dollar being put aside for a specific purpose. Important to note that as you see it in the presentation later on. Budget deliberations, June 5th, we're presenting here tonight. June 12th, Pending, of course, Council's direction, uh, public finance meeting. 
That means public come on in, ask your questions. June 19th, the regular and finance meeting again, and June 26th, the regular meeting to pass the budget and set the tax rates as required. Executive summary, here we go. Okay. We have working capital of $600,000. This is basically a synopsis of what happened in 2017 and what we're proposing for 2018. So this goal, uh, sorry, this slide is the framework one that I was referencing. Okay, I'm not going into individual details, staying high level. Basically, we have working capital $628,000. Reserves, 1.1. Reserve funds, about 600,000. Note, we have a 2017 adjusted surplus, this being calculated on 25th of May, about $770,000. Our preliminary capital budget for 2018, 5.5. So what are we requesting from the levy for the capital budget? 900. 2018 preliminary operating budget expenditures, 15.5. What are the operating net revenues for 2018 to this point? These are net other revenues, not touching the levy or anything, 6.5. So what are we asking for from the levy? It's a combination of what we need for the operating plus what we need for capital, so it comes out to 9.3. We're proposing to use the uh, part of the surplus to bring the total amount to $10 million. This is a equal to a 6% increase over the 2017 levy of 9.4. 2017, I hope it's never repeated. It was a tough year. It, there were extensive challenges. We had high staff turnover. We had contract changes. I'm thinking waste management. We had construction challenges. Omera, you notice that the project continued on over the course of the winter. Well, there was a gas line in there that they couldn't get at to, uh, they couldn't get to until the springtime. We had increased legal costs and staff were overwhelmed. But there were some good things too. Kirkland Lake hit a bit of a rebound. FedEx came. The mine talked about expansion. We had residential expansion. If I'm not mistaken, I think we'll have 15 homes going up this year. Major projects that will benefit everybody have gotten underway. I'm thinking specifically the connecting link the uh, redoing of the uh, government road between Burnside and uh, Allen. Also the Swastika wastewater project. It looks as if we're only uh, servicing Swastika, you're not. You're building the infrastructure you need to con for the land in between. That's your future development. Omera reconstruction will be finished. And of course we have the aquatic center. But without a doubt, it wasn't the good news that got us through, it was the staff. Okay, I only been in the position for two months. I've been around for, I think, about 18 years. You have incredible staff. I've never seen them from the same perspective as I did, but from the person that was pushing a shovel out in the street to the most senior managers, they all pulled together. They went way beyond what anybody could ask of them. I, I'm not being a rah-rah person. I'm just simply stating a fact that I hope is recognized. I also want to thank outside help. When we took the position on, we knew that it, we needed to get traction again. We knew that there was skepticism, both within our ranks, within council and the public. We brought in a number of people, extremely well-skilled, and they ran shotgun on us, if you want to call it that. They were asked to scrutinize everything we did in relation to the budget process, our data, our assumptions, our calculations, and our reasoning. So for two months, they sat with every manager and picked it apart piece by piece and said, is this too low? Is this too high? Why are you doing this? Anything that the public could ask, these people asked. They effectively, they helped us rebuild our capacity and they helped us get, a, get to where we are today, the ability to present a budget. I'd like to say specifically thank you to Tom Gannon of Grant Thornton, as well as Barry Ryan, Val Goyer, and Claudette Pullen. 
This is a reference sheet. When you're looking at the package that you have before you, this is the sheet that you'll be seeing, and this is the one that I'm going to be speaking off for the next few minutes. This is the 2017 operating budget. Challenges identified previously notwithstanding, we ended 2017 pretty well. Our operating expenses were higher than budgeted. That's for sure, but the overage includes significant non-cash current expenses. I'm pointing at uh, the second line, capital assets amorti amortization. I'm trying to point at it, uh, tallying about 2.1 million. As per accepted municipal accounting practices, that amount is removed from consideration because it's a long-term cost. There are other when you look at, and when you take that out, you've had 15.5 as your budget, you had 16.2 spent, add 2.1 for the am amortization, you came out at 18.3. So your subtotal, eight, well, 18.3. Take out the revenues, 16.1 came out, okay, so, or you earned. Uh, resulting deficit, 2.2. Remove the amortization at that point. So now you have a deficit of $104,000. When you go through, and you'll see this later on in the uh, presentation, there are key, massive, well, not massive, but key important hits that we took. So I'm going to try to explain them. I am not a, 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 an actuarial by any sense. One is the TPR projected retiree benefits of 768000 the landfill closure accrual of 107. These are also non-cash expenses. They're equatorial expenses that get expensed in 2017 but will be paid out in the future. Their obligations, as obligations, they're unfunded but and must be, the dollars must be raised in the levy in the year that they are to be paid out. In other words, you're not absorbing the cost now. So if you remove them from the budget hit, you've now come out with a surplus of 770. And again, that is as of 25. Um, we, there may be some adjustments, but uh, to my uh, knowledge, that they will not be material, about 25000 What happened in 2017 that took us over budget? How did everything unfold? I'm not going to go in detail again, but let's go th this slide here just takes you through the major fluctuations. We can begin with the revenue side of it. Again, you have a deficit 104. You took your revenue, you had 16.2 in revenue, but you assumed that you're going to have 661,000 well, in uh, uncollectible taxes. So you would have had total net revenue of 15.5. I'm looking at this column here. In your actuals, you actually had revenue of 16, a little bit under, but you didn't have near that number of uh, uncollectible taxes. Okay, we really brought that down, and I hate this most. Um, so our net revenues were 16, a $490,000 uh, difference between what was budgeted and what was actually uh, realized. Now, where were the big fluctuations in 2017? Administration, okay, 24% uh, uh, over what it should have been. Why? The CAO budget had not been, uh, the CAO salary had not been budgeted. It was budgeted up to, I think it was in March, and after that it was uh, left empty. The same with the assistant position. Fire, this is a big one. Arbitration uh, settled back pay, uh, back pay to $200,000, so you see why it's over here. Economic development and tourism, um, I, I really like this word. I was seconded to public works. Yes, I was very distracted when I got there, but that is what happened here. So I didn't do some of those projects, and they were deferred. TPR operations, a retired employee benefit. Again, this is what I had referred to before. It's an actuarial calculation, $768,000. But look what it did to the budget, right? So that's where you see the big hit. Engineering, you had transfers to the reserve. Okay, that's basically you're taking the money from one, co uh, one account and putting it into the other account. It's still your money. Same with uh, roads. You had winter maintenance uh, was underspent. You had a lot of equipment issues and other challenges. Waste management, a uh, big one here, future dump cl uh, closure accrual. Again, you have to plan for this. You'll pay it out into the future. To Miskaming Health Unit, you had a, a single refund, a, a one-time uh, uh, affair of 26%, or, or that equal 26%. Levy for the capital, these are the dollars that are taken 
and put towards, whoa, sorry, capital projects, okay? Some of them were, and when we get to the capital, you'll see that some of the projects were delayed. We had some other challenges with it. Some agreements only came in very late. But your total fluctuations added up to 595. Or, and when you put that against what you had over here at 490, right, your uh, increased revenue, that's where you get your $104,000 deficit. I'm going to move towards the capital, and if I'm going too fast or I'm messing things up, please let me know, because I'm on a roll. Okay, capital cheat. What happened in capital? The budget for capital in 2017 was 17.1. We actually only expended 14. So there's 2.9 million that was underspent. Which projects? Omero reconstruction, gas line issue. Flow meter, Aqua didn't get it in until the end of the year and uh, beginning of this year. Swastika uh, waste water plant decommissioning, I can't even say those terms. But that was underspent in 20, uh, 2017, but it's a multi-year project, so it moves forward. Pool, complex elevator, okay, these were other projects. So the totals equal from 2017, 1.9 million in underspent, they're being moved with their associated funding into 2018. So you look at it, you say, well, there's still a million that's unaccounted for. Well, that's a connecting link. We didn't even get the agreement, I think, until it was uh, September, way past the construction season. So that uh, was never taken on in 2017, moved to 2018. The result, that's where you're going to see a big chunk of your 2018 capital. It's moving forward from 2017. So you have a summary of your operating, you have a summary of your capital, these are your reserves. In, at the end of 2017, again this is a December 31st, and it, some, it's not finalized until the audit is completed, you had $628,000 in your working capital. Your total reserves, including what was in the work, working capital, come up to $1.1 your reserve funds, again, these are segregated and dedicated, come up to 598000 Again, not uh, finalized until the audit is completed. It's, it's, it, it could always be better. It's certainly not as bad as we thought it was at one point. Why do I say that? Well, let's go back to 2018 preliminary budget. The first time it was revealed in 20, uh, sorry, February, we were, the public, we, were presented with a worst case scenario. We were working under the assumptions we would not have any reserves. That our uncollectible taxes and loans would be astronomical. That commercial property assessments would be appealed and we wouldn't be able to handle them. It would be an, an, an additional cost, I think 370000 Waste collection challenges, we knew that was coming. Increased operating costs because we had uh, from the TPR and from the uh, fire um, arbitration, and that's the retro payments. Also in 2017, we assumed there were some under budgeting or some budget corrections that had to be made, and we were missing key positions that had to be filled. Overall, between, uh, the public was told to expect a 14 to 24 percent, percent increase in the levy in 2018. When I start talking now about the 2018 operating, this will be the reference sheet. It's in your first package that you have. Let's take a look at the 20 preliminary operating, general operating budget. TKL departments are anticipated to be <coughs> to spend 13.9. Regional agencies are anticipated to cost the uh, municipality another 1.9. Our total expense in 2018 15.9. Let's put this against the revenues. Taxis levy, obviously nothing yet. Other revenue, this is your Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund, this is payments that come in from the courts, etc. amount to 6.7. Our tax write-offs in 2018, we assume they're going to be about 170,000, 171,000. So if you tally that up, your total revenue is 6.5 against total expense of 15.9. 
The difference, and that comes from the levy, 9.3. Why? What happened between 2018 and 2017? Same kind of sheet. Budgeted amount, of course, zero, because we haven't passed the budget. Tax levy, I'm referring back to the executive summary where we said we'd like to go at 10 million. Our revenue that we can account for in 20, uh, 2018 from other sources, 6.7. Tax write-offs, minus 170. Surplus that we want to carry forward, 2.68 to use, I should say. Comes out to total revenues of 16.8. That compares to 16.1 from 2017. Where do you see the increases and the decreases? Again, the major line items in administration. Right? It's not written in there, but we have a lot of legal costs. We have other positions that um, need to be paid out. We have consulting costs. This, if uh, the people that attended the presentation last week on Thursday, uh, it was a new counselor training session. They were very clear to, they, were, they made it very clear, legal costs for municipalities will be increasing as new codes of conduct come into play, new relation, uh, uh, policies between, for codes of conduct between staff and council, and the um, more extensive use of in, 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 investigative uh, resources. Treasury, you also see a change in the, price, uh, in the costs here. Why? We have positions that were filled, added, or moved. So Treasury has absorbed communications, it absorbed uh, municipal information systems, they came out of economic development. Uh, there was uh, a hiring of a health and safety person, and of course we have a procurement person sitting over there. Fire, we have an increase, but it's the arbitrated accrual from, uh, that was implemented from last year. Economic development and tourism, well, that's me again, and uh, I, I've been seconded over to this position, so I'm doing what I can on weekends, but it's only going so far. TPR operations, that's the retiree benefits from last year. They're not being repeated, so if you see the budget, it's much less than it was last year. Parks and recreation, you see like a 7% increase. You can take a look at your utilities and explain that one right away. Pool loan, that's a new item. Engineering. Okay, we have some unfulfilled positions. There's some 2017 uh, transfers to reserves that occurred. That was a one time. It's, I can't account for that in 2018 until the end of the year if it happens again. Planning and building, we have some changes here too, but you're also seeing far more activity. Uh, so they're a little bit busier, even though they're charging a little bit less. And that waste management, costs associated with a new contract. It's not just the contract costs. It's cost of lawyers, cost of reviews, cost of other uh, studies that have to be done. To Miskaming Health Unit, you see that it's increased. As I said before, it's a one-time refund that we got in 2017. Levy for the capital, this, these are the amounts that will have to be put towards capital projects in uh, 2018. It's required for the unfunded portion. How does this compare to what we were presented in February and March? February, we had 11.7. Note, in the February and March, there was only operating, no capital, no expansions. Item, uh, line items began to change. By March 23, the estimated uh, operating budget came down to 11.5. Where were the adjustments? Well, we found in payroll, you know, duplications, and we were able to uh, rationalize those. Loan payments, we took them out because we'll, we may not pay them this year, maybe next year. Tax write-off, uh, they're, they're recouped at the year end. You did very, very well in 2017, 2018. Dupl uh, there's uh, duplication in public works that weren't consistent with prior years. That's not nearly as devious as it sounds. It means that you were charging some expenses for vehicles and you always had a, uh, a revenue line that, uh, that, that paralleled it and washed it out. But when they were doing the budgeting in March, they forgot one of those columns. So you had the expense, but you didn't have the revenue to take care of it. Pool loan, new, or sorry, waste management uh, estimate was high, so there's a, a change there. Uh, pool loan is six months instead of eight months. There was an uh, understatement with the Heritage North loan that had to be corrected. 
and then we had some under uh, projected expenses with uh, public works. Miscellaneous, that's all the other ones, came out to 2.1. So you had from a 2.1 reduction from 11.5, you come out to 9.3. Now you have to add to that the capital from the levy request, 9,000, uh, 900,000, oh, I wish it was 9,000. Uh, in 2017 surplus that we want to use, again, we come back to the number of 10 million. 2018 capital, this is the reference sheet. 2018 projects, projects new to 2018, 3.5. Projects carried forward from past year, 1.9. Total capital budget, 5.5. Total funding secured, 4.6 or 84%. Request from the levy, that's our share that we have to pay even with any kind of funding agreement, we're coming in at 900,000. Have to emphasize, other years we, we would come forward with a wish list. This is priority one, two, three, four. We don't have a wish list. This is the list. There's many things you can do. You can cut it and move it to the future years. It's going to be more expensive. You probably will risk your funding that's associated with the items. And overall, what are you doing? You're carrying on by buying into the future. And I shouldn't preach, so I'm going to shut up. Comparison to the past capital budgets. Pretty much in line. 2015, 4.8. 7.2 in 2016, but then you had the dollars set aside for the pool. You had 14.1 in 2017, but look at the dollars set aside for the pool. And I'm only highlighting it because it's the major capital item there that comes from the, uh, from the town. And in 2018, 5.5, and you still have that uh, uh, item set aside. But if you look at the capital budgets net of the pool, 4.8, 7.7, 1.9, 4.6, we're following the same trend as we did before. Will we ever break that trend? <clears throat> Your infrastructure needs a lot of work and it's gonna be a challenge. So, no, I don't think we're going to break that trend. Summary, this is the part where I begin to stop talking, lucky you. Levy needed for the 2018 operating, 9.3. Levy needed for 2018 capital, 900. Subtotal that we need, 10.2. We take, and we're proposing to take from the 2017 uh, surplus, two, uh, 268,000, and the remainder goes to working capital as per council's resolution in December 2017. So what's our 2018 tax levy that we're proposing? 10 million. How does that compare to 2017? 9.4. What's the difference? 562,000. What's your increase? 6%. Just to clarify, that 6% uh, tax levy includes the fact of the increased assessment? It's working with the increased assessment, with, yes. Yeah, dollar yeah. wise, yeah. No stunning looks from my colleagues? Yes, okay. adamant. Thank you. I'm going to move now to the grand question, how do you pay for everything and setting the tax rate. I'd like to turn that over to Ryan Dagelman. To preface it, in the past, we would often show multiple tables and get lost in the minutia of the discussion. We want to do it a little bit different this year in a way that I think is far more understandable to the public and far, far more transparent. You'll see exactly what you're doing and where you're getting it. So if, Ryan, you can come up. He's fine. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, so if I can go to the first slide. Okay, so the first slide I'd like to present, it represents information that council has historically used when looking at setting tax rates and ratios and the impact it will have on the taxpayer. Um, this scenario uses the 10 million uh, levy that was discussed previously. 
Um, it's revenue neutral, which means that even with a levy increase, the rate and ratio changes from previous years and uh, the distribution of taxes amongst the classes is similar to what it was in 2017. Uh, the graduated taxation ban within the industrial class of 2.5 million should remain in place for 2018, but will be reviewed for relevance and necessity on a, a yearly basis. Uh, there are a few points I'd like to bring up with the slides, um, the data on this slide. Um, the first is that I've modified the um, 2017 residential polls 25 and 26 rate, uh, which is Bernhardt Morissette. Uh, the original bylaw was passed using 40% of the regular rate factor instead of the usual 35. Uh, as you know, this was adjusted by the municipality late in 2017, so I've put that actual rate back to 35%, and it's not what was in the original bylaw. Um, the second thing you may notice on there is that there's a 100% increase in uh, the commercial rate for polls 25 and 26, uh, and that's basically because 2018 is the very first year that there's a commercial assessment out in that area. Um, the last point I'd like to make is um, the examples with the um, where you can see the house with a hundred thousand dollar assessment taxes and the hundred and five assessment. Um, what it would look like under this scenario, I've included both education and municipal taxes uh, together. Uh, most people don't relate to the separation of municipal and education taxes and only see the total overall figure on their bill. So even though we have no control over that education levy, this is intended to provide a more accurate figure to the public. So before we move over to the second slide, um, I'd like again to say that this, that in the past, this was the information that was provided to council to make rate decisions, and this would normally be relayed to the public and to the media. Uh, what I can tell you from front frontline experience, and which I'm sure councillors you've also seen and heard firsthand, uh, is that this data and change in rate information can be somewhat misleading and uh, somewhat confusing to the taxpayer. Um, tax rates and ratios are important to know and to utilize, but for the average person, these can be difficult to understand. This is why, in my opinion, I would like to see that going forward, we focus more on the actual levy or dollars we are talking about raising and less on the rates and ratios as rates and ratios are only relative to the budgeted dollars we are looking to collect. I believe by doing this, we'll give taxpayers a clear picture of what they can expect in taxes from year to year by using something everyone can relate to, which is actual dollars. Um, so let me provide you with an example of what I'm referring to. So if we use this rate summary to look at the rate change for the multi-residential class, uh, we can see that with this levy scenario, that class can expect to see an 8.88 reduction in their tax rate. So if we wanna switch slides. However, when we move to the second slide, we, and we look at the dollar change for the multi-residential class, we can see that the class will actually see an 8% increase in actual dollars paid. Now the reason for this can include different factors like assessment changes as an example, but the point is that using rates to explain levy changes from year to year can be a, paint a very unrealistic picture of what will actually come out of the taxpayer's pocket at tax bill time. I believe part of our focus to become more transparent and open should also include trying to find more straightforward and simple ways to explain our processes and the reasons we do what we do in ways that everyone can understand. I believe focusing on the dollar levy change and using rates and ratios as secondary data instead of vice versa will go a long way in making this much easier to understand process for everyone involved. So with this slide, uh, you can see the dollar figures of what each class can expect in increases or decreases on a whole from both the municipal levy and the education levy. Uh, as is normal for Kirkland Lake, the residential taxpayer will take a major share of any increase and can expect to cover about 70% of the total, um, the total dollar increase. Uh, the total overall increase is sitting at 5.81%, which includes the education levy. Um, if we move to the third slide. Uh, so, sorry, go ahead, yes. Sorry, can I just ask a quick question? Of course. With, with respect to the education levy, mm -hmm. has that remained flat? Uh, so it's reduced. Uh, so if you look, if we want to go back to the second slide, if you right click, then you can go to previous. 
So you can see, if you look at the difference uh, between 2007 and 18, and you look at the education column, you'll see that there are a couple classes where the dollar amount is going to decrease, uh, but the majority are going to increase, even though the assessment, the actual rate that the province has provided to us has dropped. But again, because of the assessment increases, uh, that usually relates to an increase in actual dollars paid. Okay, thanks. Okay, so uh, the third slide, this breaks down more on an individual basis, uh, what individual properties can expect as far as increases or decreases in actual dollars. Uh, so you can see with the residential class here, um, around 80% of the properties could see a, an increase of zero to $200 uh, and with an average of $125 amongst the whole class. Um, you'll also see that uh, with, uh, with the budgeted number of 10 million, there wouldn't be any residential properties seeing a decrease at this time. Uh, if you wanna go forward. Um, this is the same scenario except for the multi-residential class. Um, so there will be some properties that see a decrease and others that see an increase uh, with an average total of uh, $1,012. Uh, here's the commercial occupied. Okay, so um, again, there will be some properties with a decrease um, and an average increase uh, on the total class of $342 in this scenario. And for industrial, um, uh, same situation, and uh, you'll see with an average increase of about $1,747. Yeah, so if anyone has any questions, I'll try my best to answer. Ryan, could you speak on behalf of that uh, other rate chart that you did for 7%? And just to give you some background information, we've been talking six here all along. One of the uh, things that came up during the meeting at, uh, for council training uh, last week uh, from Wishart and Wishart was that uh, the provincial government is going to uh, put in place that the municipalities are going to have to put specific dollars away for uh, reserve funds. In the past, it's been discretionary. That's about to change. So uh, we have never done that and made a commitment to X number of dollars or percentage wise. And I thought, given that we're at 6%, the effects of adding, bringing that to 1% uh, or 7%, bringing it up by 1% and putting that into reserve fund, uh, what effect it would have on the tax levy and total to the, the homeowner. It's not a dramatic effect from what I've seen. Uh, no, you're right. It's not a dramatic effect. And I have the data here on paper, but we don't have it on a, on yeah. a slide. Um, Do you have it? Oh, okay. Look, great. We have a copy. the very top one yeah so uh, by looking at this uh, rate summary you can see that the for the residential rate okay it's gonna move from a change of 1.72 to about 2.93 uh, so there's a bit of an increase there uh, but if we get back to the levy change and we we talk about that instead of the rates yeah, just to the next slide, just the next tab, correct, yeah, perfect. Uh, so you can see that the, the municipal percentage, the difference goes from the last slide, which sat at 7.72% to about 9% uh, for the resident. And uh, overall, it changes from six point, or total, it changes from the 5.81% to 6.75%. So it's not a, a dramatic um, increase, but uh, it, it is still a, a little bit more of an increase. And if we wanna go back to the individuals and how it will affect uh, them, so that would be the third tab, yeah. So you can see from the residential where the last average was $125, uh, this one's up to about $145. 
So it doesn't have a, that one percent did not have a dramatic effect on the average household. No. And I think it's a it's a good time to start and get into a good habit. We haven't been able to do that in the past, but it's uh, there's an opportunity here while still keeping the tax rates down to do and, that. And also remember, we can rework this data to any budget number that yeah. council decides that we can bring back to review how it will affect. Roman, Councillor Roman. Uh, with, with regards to going from 6 to 7%, could that also be accomplished with the, the 2000... 17 surplus because um, my understanding is there's close to three quarter of a million surplus in 2017 for which we're pulling about a quarter of a million out the rest going to work in capital now can we draw can we just draw more out of the 2017 surplus I would I only think. reference that in the past council did suggest that the working capital be increased so that's why we only went with the uh, the, the amount that we mentioned at that point i just want to put that out there okay but that is still flexible then it, it, yeah it's it, doable. It, it, it it is doable but uh the amount of working capital we have is not very high to begin with okay no just but as long as i understand uh, if what i what could our options are yeah thanks if i could insert too um at the beginning of the presentation, I also mentioned that we have other budgets, uh, the water and wastewater. Now, the water is legislated to pay for itself. The wastewater, the legislation was never passed, and we have a deficit. I think it was 31000 in uh, 2017, and it will increase, oh, let's say 200 some thousand in uh, 2018 as we take on some of these projects. And that may be uh, a consideration, too. That would be your working capital that would be used to offset that. Yes, because that 200,000 would have a significant effect on the sewage treatment uh, charges for sure. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments? But I, I would wait for the, um, put more money aside. We already, we already have residential at 7%, which is probably higher than I want it to be, but I might be able to live with that. And we have to remember, we also put the water up higher. Uh, I don't remember the percentage exactly, but that was 11% 11. 11 we put higher. Yeah, so that's, you put those two together, you get, you're starting to get close to 10%. If you add that 1%, which doesn't look big, but like Ryan said, it's 9% for residential, plus your water, now you're around 11, 12% probably, which is way too high. Um, I think I could live with 6%, barely. Uh, I'm not too happy, but. I mean, I know Wilf worked hard, and uh, I'm well, sure if you could find some, I mean, all of you worked hard. I'm sure if you could find some more, more things that we could cut, we would. But I don't think adding more, more is the time to do it. Also, we have a provincial election coming, and who knows what's going to happen there. Um, I know they said they, they want the percentage for, but that might all be changed in a month. Well, I'm just tossing it out. I think it's something to think about. Uh, we haven't made a commitment to uh, uh, reserve funds in the past, so uh, we can don't have to make any decisions tonight, that's for sure. Uh, I'm compliment to uh, Wilf and, and the outside help that uh, uh, we received, plus Jose and uh, Ryan. Uh, coming down from, well, let's face it, the 24% announcement was a little ridiculous and in, uh, didn't make much sense. But uh, having gone through this whole process and we had a lot more meetings on budget this year than most years, I can say that uh, we have a better understanding of how st amounts are getting posted through the accounts to the proper accounts. And in the past, uh, uh, this is a probably the most accurate budget that we've ever had. So uh, I do thank you, Wolf, uh, Hosea, Ryan, and our outside uh, auditors and help, uh, including Val. Uh, tremendous uh, difference in uh, the way we present the budget, and it's a lot more understandable. So I, we appreciate that. Yep. 
maybe we should, um, I don't know how you do it, say sorry to people in town. That 24% didn't come out from us. We, we, no, it as, did as not. As a council, that's we said do not put this out, and it was put out anyway. Um, that's a fair comment. And that was put out on numbers that were not known, which is not a good way to do things anyway. But, and I'm not throwing mud for Peter. He, he, he was trying to do his best also. Um, but I mean, that was, I'm sorry to the people, like really, I know some people didn't sleep at night, some people were stressed, some people might have moved out of town, I don't know. Uh, but that number was really out of whack. Uh, now we see that the numbers came in and it's pretty much in line with what we were thinking. And um, we've been here for a long time, with Todd Longer and Tony, and they, they know what's going on. And usually you know about where you're gonna be and I'm not surprised at those numbers really even though I was hoping, like I said, to be lower. But sometime, we've been at 0% for quite a long time. Uh, I know some people, they go up because the value of their house goes up and we have no control over that. But we try to keep the amount pretty stable and right now it is actually pretty stable. Uh, but we have to realize some people will pay more taxes than last year. And it will be more than 6% if their value of their house went up higher than 6%. So there's a lot of, other things that we can't control. Um, some people might go down, I don't know. If they value their house went down, they, they, might, they might get lucky. But at the end of the day, we, we, we only control one thing, it's how much money is spent. That's the only thing really we could control. And uh, I think lots of work was done and yeah. I'm quite happy with how it was presented. Yeah, I think, well, the, with the increased assessment, it's still gonna be pretty close to that 6% on average. The other thing I think we did this year, uh, Wilf, was uh, recapture some of those capital uh, uh, projects that, uh, whether they were big or small, that have been postponed for two or three years. Uh, so we made up for it this year, and that's a little higher in the, in the capital uh, spending, but uh, these things had to be done, like the fire hall, for instance, uh, uh, equipment, the buildings, uh, so I think we've, we've made a good, uh, uh, had a good approach to, to getting some of these things done because we don't want to all see all these things coming back next year or we will have a massive hit. Councillor Morgan. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Pat. Just a point of order. Are, are we looking for sort of general comments and questions at this point or are yep. we still going through the presentation or? Okay. Um, could I? Um, first of all, Jean-Guy hit the nail on the head. Um, I also want to apologize not only to uh, the citizens of Kirkland Lake for the way that the, uh, the budget was you know, presented this year by previous staff, but, uh, but also to our current staff. Um, it took us you know, a few bumps in the road to get here, but I can assure the people of this community that we now have in place some absolutely stellar employees that um, are very conscientious, worked with Pat to you know, produce this very tight and, and uh, meaningful budget. A um, Couple of, uh, and, and you know, I really want to acknowledge you guys, Wolf and, and every, all the senior managers, everybody that's sitting here and those that aren't. Um, you know, without exception, I think everybody is, uh, is, is top shelf now. Like I said, it took a few bumps on the road to get here, but we're here now. And, uh, and this budget uh, is, is really airtight. And I also want to point out a couple of things. And, and, um, and I don't know if you have these numbers at your fingertips, Wolf, but you alluded to it early on in your presentation that there's a lot of one-time expenses in this uh, that we're, that we're dealing with here, both from 17 and in the budget for 18 to do with whatever. I mean, things we can talk about, things we can't talk about. But uh, can you give us sort of a round ballpark number as to what some of these, like what that total might be? Is it like 100,000, 500,000, a million? I don't know how I can answer that and be totally But it's not insignificant, honest. right? No, it is not okay. insignificant. Um, I just want to go back to where... And this, I, where I'm going with this is mm -hmm. that um, 
what you're saying, uh, Councillor Kiley, is, is certainly has merit, but with what we've had to deal with this year and the extent of these one-time um, costs that we're incurring, and are not incurring, but that we're having to deal with, um, to add on additional percentages on top of this would result in almost double taxation for next year because a lot of these things are going to fall off of the, uh, the budget next year. And although it's always nice to have nice comfortable reserves, and I, I get the point, uh, when new businesses come to town, they're asking what their tax rate is, not necessarily what the reserves are. Uh, so we need to be mindful of that. We're on the cusp of some real, getting some real traction with, with new businesses opening in the community, and I think we need to keep that um, message going that we're very mindful of what the tax rates are in Kirkland Lake and not to, you know, make sure that we're aware of what's, what's down the road as opposed to just what's in front of us today. Um, the second thing is, is if we, if we do start to entertain uh, any, in, any further increase in the tax rate for this year, I would definitely like to see the uh, impact on the commercial segment. And I guess this is a question to you, Ryan, has to do with ratios. Um, over the last, I think, 10 years that I've been sitting on council here, we've, we've, we've made uh, significant efforts to bring our commercial tax rates uh, down. Uh, some of it was directed by the province, some of it was our own accord. And I'm just wondering, are we kind of there yet, or do we still have a little bit further to go on that? It, it, it's, we're still a little bit ways off. Um, I, I mean, the factors for us here is that the majority of our assessment in Kirk Lake mm -hmm. falls onto our residential base. We just don't have the commercial and industrial base right now. Um, so, so we're still off. Um, I think with some of these new projects coming, right. uh, I could see that helping itself out in the future. Uh, but for right now, uh, we just kind of have to play with the cards we're dealt and okay. where our so assessment is. All, all I'm saying is that if we are entertaining that uh, those additional increases, I would certainly like to see the impact on the commercial sector as much as on the residential sector. Um, the other item, and. Um, the, the mortgage for this place, Wolf, is, it, is, it, is this the last year that we're paying it in 2018? In 2019. So we've got, over, we've got overlap next year as well, right? Okay, so that'll be, that'll be, right, so that'll be coming off in, okay. So not, not this year, next year, but the year after. All right, thank you. I think that's it for me, thanks. That amounts to 368,000 a year, I think. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to uh, <clears throat> go on and on about the, the 1% uh, suggested increase, uh, but one of the things that came out in the meeting uh, training session last week was that uh, <clears throat> the provincial government is going to mandate certain, a certain uh, dollar amount or percentage uh, put towards reserves, uh, and if you don't, you're going to lose some of your grant money, so uh, at some point, we certainly have to go in that direction, so. Yes, that's it. Uh, Councillor Morgan. Um, there's only some very minor comments to do with uh, small amounts, like say, for example, in capital. Can we just communicate those directly to staff then, or how do you want to? How do you like? Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, I mean, I don't want to belabor the point today. Okay, thanks. Jordan. So I have a motion motion that's moved by Councillor Roman and seconded by Councillor Morgan. The council adjourns its meeting of finance held June 5th, 2018 to a regular meeting of council. All in favor? Approved. We'll have a five minute break before we go to our regular council meeting. Thank you.
Good afternoon and welcome to the Corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake Meeting of Council held June the 5th, 2018. Uh, before we start our meeting, I, <clears throat> I have a notice to read. The Town of Kirkland Lake is conducting review of the sanitary sewer and stormwater management system systems in the village of Swastika over the coming next coming weeks. The town will be utilizing a water tracing die to determine the source of a significant amount of water entering our sanitary sewer lines. This will assist us in sizing the appropriate pipes for the decommissioning of the Swastika sanitary plant and extension of sewers to the new plant in Kirkland Lake. The water tracing dye is safe, non-toxic, and biodegradable. For more information on the dye, including a material safety data sheet on the product, please visit http uh, p, uh, prestine.com water tracing dyes. If you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to reach out to the Phys Department of Physical Services at 705-567-9365. Thank you. Okay, to start our meeting, we'll have a mo moment of silence, please. Thank you. Is there any declaration of pecuniary interest? Oh, uh, the approval of the agenda. It's moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Roman. The Council approves the agenda for its regular meeting of June 5th, 2018 with the deferral of bylaw 18-086, which amends the traffic and parking bylaw. All in favor? It's carried. Any declaration of pecuniary interest? None declared. Petitions and delegations? Item four, Mike Roman, Team Northern Throttle Sports Tourism Request. Mike, come on ahead. And Hello, my name is Mike Romain. I'm here with the Team Northern Throttle. Uh, we're asking for the sports tourism uh, funding from the town. Again, we've asked for this a couple of years ago. Uh, we didn't last year. And uh, our, our event, we bring about 125 to 150 participants and two to 3,000 spectators. Um, in the sports tourism, funding it asks for uh, motel rooms that we rent or that are rented for this event it's very hard for us to trace how many motel rooms are rented by spectators or by participants this year what we've done is for our participants we have a checkbox if they rent a motel room or not we'll be able to trace it further from there <clears throat> many of our spectators and participants come from out of town so it does bring tourism into our area um, some of them do rent rooms we know this because they come to the airport leave their cars at the airport and they leave so they go stay somewhere and all of them spend money in Kirkland Lake at some point I know when I go out of town when I go to even just to New Lisker to their event uh, the group that we go with we're anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars just on food we don't buy it in Kirkland Lake because when we go to New Liskard, it's easier, easier for us to go to Walmart or Food Basics there to get it. So I know that these people that do come to town, they do purchase their food here because they, they follow the same model as we do when we go elsewhere. And that's all, it's just, <clears throat> we're looking to see if we can get the, uh, get the funding to defer our, the, uh, the rent for the airport. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, any questions of uh, presenter? Uh, so uh, I guess what I'm hearing is that uh, your, your uh, participants will advise your committee if the number of the state in the hotels. Yes. And from that, uh, you'll present that to our, uh, to our uh, um, appropriate town people. And yes. then a determination would be made as to 
the amount that uh, would be reduced? Or, uh, Wilf, uh, how do you want to add to this? Mike I, Mike, I assume you're looking for a commitment on a dollar amount prior to this, or can you be as specific as you can, please? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah we, uh, we would like a f to get the full commitment of the town to allow us to use the airport free. But if not, a 75% would be fantastic. It, it is a very costly event for us to put on. Um, anywhere from, I would say, forty to $60,000 for us to, to do this event. And last year with the rain, we didn't get the participants. We're way, way down in our bank account. It's uh, something happens this year. Unfortunately, it could be the last year for the event. It's uh, it's a very very hard gamble for us right now. Councillor Morgan. Yeah, I just want to uh, speak in support of uh, what what Mike is bringing to the table here. Um, although this obviously does not, you know, sports tourism was originally designed for uh, well, a recreation department. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to do with ball fields and, and tournaments and, and things to, of, the, of that nature. Um, this, you know, basically falls on physical services. So it's, it's a little different department. I think that's why, partially why we're, why we're dealing with it here. But I think it, it fits the spirit of what council wanted to do with the sports tourism aspect, where if, if somebody was doing a unique event and they were bringing significant number of people to town and there was significant spin-offs from that event then the town would entertain the thought of you know some some comp like some reduction in the cost and certainly you know I'm I'm in favor of that if if we're continuing down that road now I know there's been some concern that um, you know the the sports tourism aspect is you know potentially uh, putting a burden on some budgets and certainly, if we're reviewing it, then we are, and we have to review it for for all of the uh, uh, events that we that we approve. But uh, if we're going to continue with the uh, um, with this, I think that this fits within the spirit, and I would certainly support it. Councillor Shamiard. Yes, Michael. Thank you for coming in. Yeah. Uh, and we know you guys bring a lot of people in town, so you could see the difference on Friday, Thursday, and Friday when the. They're starting coming in town, and they pull trailers and all this. Do you do you charge anything for the trailers to stay on on your on the land, or even a small fee for twenty dollars, for example, for the weekend would be? We we the charge top. the spectators if they're going to stay, but the participants, it's part of their their fee for for okay. Okay. for and raising. Maybe um, I know it's hard to get numbers, but Bonnie has a way to get the numbers. She asked the motel yesterday how many people stays there. I think it, Bonnie. Yeah, so she, for example, when a swim meet, she'll ask, she'll go to the motel, say, how many people from the swim meet stay here? And she has the exact number of room. You could exactly do the same thing. Uh, I'm on uh, Todd's side. I was act, always interested of, of sponsoring you guys somehow, try to help you. Um, usually, if it's a sports thing, it comes out of Bonnie's budget. Uh, this will be physical service. It will come out of their budget. Uh, if it's $1,000, $1,200, how much you charge you for the weekend for the, for the airport? Do you remember? Three twenty-five a day, I believe. Okay, so it would be three hundred a day. And usually it take four days or five days. Five days. Five days. So really, we're talking about uh, if we go fifty-fifty, for example, we're talking about seven fifty dollars. So it's not a, a huge amount. It, it's an amount to show that we care and we're we're happy for what you're doing. And I, I'm on Todd's side. I would be happy to do this easily. Uh, I don't know if I would go hundred percent or fifty percent because we don't have the numbers. That's what I'm I'm missing. So lots of time for swim swim meet too or stuff like this. Uh, Bonnie checks the number. Sometimes she goes 50 percent. Sometimes it's 100 percent. It always depends on many. And there's not real. It's hard to, it's hard to find ways. To see how many people came in. I mean, we know people come in, but if you know, that's what it's hard. Uh, you could also count people if they camp at, uh, at uh, Culver. That's also people staying in town. Really, I uh, know it's not motel, but it's also it's 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 a rental they do uh, in town. So it also counts. Uh, the only one that wouldn't count is the people staying at your, at your place and camping. So I think there's a bit of wait, a bit of work for you guys to do, but I think it's something that we could help for sure. Okay, just just to note that uh, 
the committee itself also rents rooms for essential staff yeah, that, that, that come. So I know we rent uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we have three three rooms booked right now, and it could be up to five just yeah. for just for our essential staff. And, and and you have to make remember, Michael, when you say Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's three rooms. It's not one. You know what I mean? Like if some meet, they come. They come for one night usually, and they'll they'll rent 15 rooms. But if people come here for five nights and they and they rent all five nights. That's five rooms basically. Okay. So it doesn't take long to go to ten rooms. Yeah. Okay. And like you said, you almost have ten right now, starting with you. Yeah. So uh, uh, go ahead, Wolf. And then. Uh, when the gold miners held the Dudley Hugh Cup, they made an effort to uh, as well to interview people and to try to have somebody on the ground to collect those statistics. I would suggest that if you want to carry this forward, you should start that, even if it means you know just a summer student or a high school student or somebody. But go to the te uh, the camping sites and just we we can help you formulate a, uh, a questionnaire. But what are you spending your money on? When did you come here? What else did you see? What else did you do? Just to give it a, a more rounded picture as to what the visitors are accomplishing and their impact here. Okay, perfect. It, it, it was with the help of your staff too that got me to put the check mark on the box or the box on our check sheet um, just so that we can start tracing these things. Because a couple of years ago when we were told that we didn't qualify for it, we didn't really get an answer on why we didn't get any of that. And uh, this year there, the staff was more willing to help us and explain to us why we didn't before and how, how we can go about getting these things. Councillor Barker. I've always uh, supported uh, the application and I will continue to support the application. Thank you. Um, I just, um, yeah, it's uh, you're going to be working with our staff, uh, continue to. Uh, but it's sort of an appropriate night to be talking about this because earlier we talked budgets. Um, so here we are trying to get everything down, 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 cut, cut, cut. And uh, I guess one of the questions I would have of the, uh, of the budget was uh, um, in, in calculating revenue, uh, they must have taken into consideration revenue from Northern Throttle, or perhaps not. I can refer that to Ashley um, in, uh, uh, in, yeah, come on up and give me a sec. <laughs> the other part of it though is at Heritage North, we, when we uh, rent a room or so to uh, another department or to a member of the public that you know we have waived the fees for, for whatever reason, we actually track that in a ghost account so we actually can show council, okay, this is how much revenue we earned. This is what the revenue that was uh, earned but not earned or what the implications were. And I would really recommend that if we're going forward, we should be doing that across the departments. Uh, we will have the, the, this coming up again in the future, not just for sport tourism, but we have the 100th anniversary. Obviously, will they want to take uh, Culver Park? Uh, and they, uh, they will come forward making requests, but what do the requests cost even, just so we can track it and explain what happened in our budgets and then that will give us a tool to project forward into the future years too for such programs. I think that we should be doing that. Okay, so we don't actually budget a revenue for uh, the drug race. That's not something we do. What we typically do with revenues is the amount of flights that come in for medevacs. So we'll say then that's where the user fee came from was a $300 user fee based on one medevac landing per day. Medevacs don't land every day. Um, but so it's just to answer this question simply, no, we don't budget their revenue coming in. That would be in addition to. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Okay, thank you, Mike. Thank you. Uh, we just have a resolution here. A resolution is moved by Councillor Roman and seconded by Councillor Morgan. The council approves the discount of rental for the airport for the June 2018 drag race under the Sports Tourism Initiative. The percentage of discount will depend on the number of accommodations in Kirkland Lake. All in favor? It's carried unanimous. Thank you. Tony. Yeah, if Mike wants, I know if Mike, if you know the whole, like how many rooms you need and all this, or the, if, yeah. if not, you yeah. can get that easily. Yeah, some guys, yeah. Okay. Okay, the next um, 
Under petitions and delegations, item four, we have Steve Cox. Um, is coming up from the, the uh, Kirkland Lake Gold Miners, and also uh, uh, Barry and Tom is uh, is accompanying Steve. Welcome. You guys were just here not that long ago. Yeah, we've been pretty busy since then. Good. So We've made uh, fair progress in the last uh, month since our first visit to council. Uh, we've put together uh, or attended the annual general meeting and f formed the new executive. Uh, we've launched our uh, season ticket uh, campaign at Merchant Mania at the complex uh, in May. And uh, I've already come close to exceeding all of last year's season ticket sales in the first month. And uh, we've also um, <clears throat> launched our corporate ca um, fundraising campaign. And uh, we've had some uh, early successes uh, with that campaign. So uh, with all that accomplished or well underway, uh, we had a very um, positive meeting with uh, Wilf and Bonnie in regards to uh, how the town can um, to assist uh, the gold miners moving forward. Um, we reviewed um, our current contracts in regards to uh, advertising and uh, ice rental rates and so forth and um, we found that all uh, satisfactory in regards to what the rates were and uh, we're, uh, we'll be honoring uh, the signed contract that the last uh, executive have signed with the town so uh, we've put that, all that behind us now and um, what we're um, over the over the um, since the gold miners have started, um, two dressing rooms have been built in the complex. Uh, the first uh, dressing room was built by Tom and, and, and Doug Murdoch underneath the area of uh, room three, four, and five, and there was an investment of about. Uh, 23,000, tw not no labor yeah. included. Oh, okay. $23,000 in that first uh, phase of the, the dressing room that they've used up to the, the start of this past season. And then at that point, um, they've chose to, uh, to move out of that area uh, because they, were, they uh, looked in favor of uh, re-renovating the 87's dressing room that's in the complex. So they've invested another $7,000 in renovating that. So, um, They've made um, a $30,000 uh, investment in the complex that uh, remains as a legacy. Uh, although they continue to use the 87's room, um, the staff have, uh, the, or the town has the opportunity to rent the space that they vacated, which it brings in more revenue. So um, what we're, um, we're, what the point I'm getting at is that um, moving forward again, um, we're trying to uh, raise the money so that we can get through the summer into the start of our season, which is um, our revenue generating portion of the season, which is uh, you know August, September, October, and so forth. So currently, uh, we're carrying a debt load from last season with the town, uh, approximately fourteen thousand dollars. So what we would like uh, council to consider, uh, and we've uh, discussed this with both Bonnie and Wolf, is that uh, up to this point, we've been receiving uh, uh, credits in regards to room rental to compensate for that investment in your facility. Uh, we're not quite at the, at the limits that uh, we've invested into the building. But we'd like to have uh, approximately $3,000 in um, in rental rates um, to well, for the, uh, from uh, January 1st to the end of this yeah. past season mm -hmm. we owed about 3,000 in room rental we'd like to have that considered okay. yeah and yeah, and uh, we'll remove and we'd like you to consider removing that from the $14,000 that we're carrying and also um, we have all intentions of paying that $14,000, but we'd like you to consider deferring that to allow us to uh, replenish our resources so that we can move through the summer, build a club, and put the club on the ice, 
and uh, and then we would uh, look at a at a at a plan that would uh, would pay that back to the town. We our goal right now is to um, to operate for one year and um, see if we can't turn this franchise around and, and, and make it a strong uh, community organization that benefits everybody, bring the players back out into the community, uh, get more attendance, get more asses in the seats, uh, excuse my language, which would just generate uh, more uh, game day revenues and so forth. So we've been working hard over the last month to put the game plan together. It's too bad that we weren't able to get started a month or two before that, but that's, that's the, the, the tight timelines that we're working at. So uh, just to, to wrap it up, uh, so we're looking at, uh, Bonnie can provide the council with the, with the exact numbers, but $14,000 in debt from the past season. Um, remove uh, a portion of that based on um, our, our room rental and repayment for what we've invested into the facility which leaves us with approximately $11,000, and then defer that to the end of our next fiscal year, which is May 31st, 2019. And if we do generate revenues um, and do come up successful prior to that time, we'll make all efforts to pay that off before that deadline. The other, the other thing we were asking too was that the, in lieu of the cost we've put in, that we receive uh, the rental free for the coming season. Councillor Shamier. I think rental was waived for the last three, four years, right, Tom? Yeah, I think uh, Bonnie said we've been, we've received a credit of about 11,000 okay, yeah. on the rental. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I know there's more exciting in town. Uh, a lot of people are talking about the team again. Uh, that's, that's an honor for you guys to be, should be proud of that. Uh, I see some excitement again a bit. Um, one thing, see if you could look at, and we tried to tell them that before, if the team comes here and play and stays in town, then we will rave wave the ice time for that mm -hmm. game. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's quite a bit of money, I think. That's right. There's, um, a, there's a couple of things like we discussed that and got clarification that from Bonnie and Wolf on that too as well. So we're, uh, we're definitely moving forward with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, one thing, I, and I shouldn't maybe say that, but one, the guy that runs the league, he drives me a bit nuts, this guy. He's, he's always <laughs> complaining about the town that they charge too much, but I look, the, the league gets about $50,000 from you guys to operate. Uh, so I guess he gets paid pretty good, but he worries about the town not doing enough. Um, I don't know if I like this. I think the, the gold miners in comparison to other uh, sites and then OJHL are uh, right in the middle um, in regards to uh, our agreements with the municipalities and what we pay and what we get. So um, that's maybe not an uh, accurate statement that the commissioner makes. Okay, yeah, okay. And, I, and I know that, that you, you talked to me before yeah. about that. But, he's, um, uh, he's no, he's, he has ideas and uh, thoughts that are useful, but the bottom line is we have to run the hockey team yeah. here, and we have to, uh, we're going to abide by, as Steve said, all the contracts and that, that we have. Uh, we also have to um, uh, deal with the league and, uh, uh, Derek Callahan will be doing most of that. I think that um, Mr. Mazuka, we have got information from him, but we do not use him as a showpiece. No. <laughs> no. That's nice. Nice. Yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah. and I think the town is ready to work with you guys. But we also same thing, Tom. You're you're between the town and him, and we're between you guys and the taxpayers. So we're we're, we're all in the middle of something, and. Uh, Bonnie has been more than good to try to help you guys, and uh, I think the council has been trying to help you, and uh, I don't think things will change. Uh, um, I know I'm ready to help you as much as we can. Well, we found out things we didn't know, and uh, we were surprised. Yeah, like, like, mm -hmm. like we, you, we didn't know these things. I know, I, know, I know you pay I sign quite a bit, but then on your side, you also get a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, That's right waived yeah. i would say not free because it's waived and th there's also some something that you should take for example the game night like i told it's mm -hmm. something that i don't know why they didn't work harder on this i know you have, might have to phone the team and say hey if you guys stay here we save this and 
some team might do it and some team might not do it. That's we're, we're putting together a package. Um, Mike Jones is looking at a package that will go out to teams. A lot depends, though, on the team, which way they're going. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the time they come here, they're on a three-gamer, mm -hmm. other than uh, Powassan, Cochran, and uh, Timmins. Everybody else is on a road trip. So if we get them Friday night, a lot of times they're heading up to Timmins to stay. Um, but if we can put together a package with a post-game meal, a room, and breakfast in the morning, that's, that may work out. Yeah. The other way, when they come from Hearst or Cochrane or Timmins first, and they come to us last, where it tends to be a Sunday afternoon game. Yeah, which would And uh, some teams may come in after their Saturday night game if they know that they can get breakfast, a, a pregame meal in the morning, and uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. go with that. So if we put yeah. that package together, it may, may be more attractive to teams and certainly going to help us. I know at first, uh, I mean, Tony remembers, everybody remembers. At first, they used to stay here a lot. Mm -hmm. And in the last two, three years, I don't know what happened. They decided they're not going to stay here. Well, I think, I think part of the problem is the way the, uh, there's not as many games now. Mm -hmm. We, used to, we, did, we mm -hmm. played a balanced schedule before, so you had eight games against, against each team. Okay. And now it's, we only play the teams from the West uh, home and home. Okay. So they're basically, uh, we play uh, 12 games against the West. Okay. So they're they're here once. Yeah, once. That's that's what the difference is there. Okay. Any other questions? Um, any other comments or did you have anything else that you wanted to? No, I think um, like I said, we've been working hard in the last month, and and uh, we find that um, how the team has been treated and by council and and by the facility in town here. Uh, has been fair in our in our opinion and uh, we just want to move forward and uh, and hopefully we can uh, make this a successful uh, venture okay um, so just with regards to what you're, you're asking for tonight just so uh, we understand you're 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 looking for that 3,000 uh, be reduced from the ice surface of uh, the uh, or 3,000 be reduced from the um, from the outstanding bill of 14 to bring it down to 11, yeah. and that you would pay the 11 um, at the uh, uh, May of 2019. That's, yeah, that's pretty correct. well what you're looking that's for tonight. Correct. Plus the uh, deferral oops, sorry. for the room for this year. Uh, plus the uh, to continue, I guess, the uh, year. Uh, yeah, room okay. rental. Yeah, to compensate for the investment in your facility. Um, to 2019. So, uh, I, I guess because we are a municipality, we're governed under we're governed under the uh, uh, municipal rules. Um, uh, I, I think one thing that you would have to understand is on that 11,000, there would be uh, uh, um, interest, and and unfortunately, the town can't. We have to charge interest. So that 11 will grow. The longer it takes to pay, mm -hmm. the 11 will grow. Um, I don't know how much, okay. but just so you know, um, yeah, we were and, and our hands are tied on that yeah, right. no, no, we're on, aware on that, that as well. Yeah. Uh, but if there's no more questions, uh, I, I'm prepared uh, to ask the clerk to read the resolution, and we can go from there. It's moved by Councillor Roman, seconded by Councillor Morgan. The council approves the request from the gold miners. One, the $3,000 of room rental owing be applied toward the total fee owing. Number two, the balance owing of $11,000 be deferred to May 2019. And number three, that the room rental for the 2018-2019 year be waived because of the club's investment of $30,000 into the dressing rooms. That sound, yeah. all in favor? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Do you want exact numbers in your bylaw? It's not necessary. It's, yeah. okay. Good. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Eh? Thanks. Okay, item five on the agenda is uh, acceptance of minutes and recommendations. It's moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Roman, that Council accepts the minutes of the following meetings. The Library Board meeting held March 22, 2018. 
The meeting to open tenders for hired equipment pre-qualification held May 22nd, 2018, and the regular meeting of council held May 22nd, 2018. All in favor? It's carried. Item six is reports of municipal officers and communications. Uh, well, if you're gonna come up and, and talk on the, um, on the proposed harvesting of timber on municipal owned properties. And Ashley's gonna join you as well? Or? Yes, and she can work the uh, report yeah, and great. answer any questions from a planning perspective. Okay. In 2000, I think seven or six, um, we had received a number of reports from uh, different sources uh, stating that the municipality is a huge landowner, has lots of wood. In uh, that era, roughly, um, council directed the Economic Development Department to determine just what was the, the truth of that. And if it was an asset that could be used, what would be the proper uh, mechanisms to go about that? We worked with local companies, uh, eventually wound up on our own, but we produced a land management agreement. A land management agreement is very similar to a forest management plan. Um, it's based on the same rules. It is, it was given, or it was developed with uh, MNR guidance all the way through and then was reviewed and uh, endorsed by the MNR before it was brought to council. It was brought to council uh, 2012 and reality was that the market had tanked. Uh, there was really no interest in it. The other reality was that there wasn't that much really good wood on municipal land. A lot of it, uh, it's terrain, it could be anything from uh, you know the age of the wood, whatever, but there were, it, it wasn't this huge bonanza out there. Uh, there were some blocks that were good and they were identified. Uh, the, I have the report here, it's, it's, it's not a, a good nighttime read, but the maps are there and everything, the information is good. Um, when we brought it back to council, the, one of the concerns that was expressed was, what about those areas that have high values in a different sense? Uh, one of those that was identified was Winnie Lake. Uh, there's very popular area, uh, camping and everything else, beautiful scenic uh, uh, viewpoints. And we subsequently did a small report on Winnie Lake area, what was the value of it, and how we can go about it. And basically that report said, hey, listen, you can look at really good wood all around it, but make sure you try to keep the lake the way it is so that it could be sold either for uh, cottage lots in the future or just for the public enjoyment. Um, other areas that, uh, of concern that had been raised during the planning process were access for hunting, fishing, ATVing, uh, snowmobile club, um, access just through the road for uh, <coughs> people that have existing uh, facilities or cottages. Uh, all of these were addressed and council made the commitment that forestry would be considered equal to every other concern out in that area. And so you basically told us, well, when we're coming back with an idea, take a look to see where it is, what the impact would be on these other areas of concern, but don't shy away from it either. Well, we're a few years later down the road here and we have been approached by different uh, harvesters and uh, timber companies. And they're saying, well, you know, that, that block over there is pretty good. That one over there is pretty good. And we thought, okay, where's this all coming from? Um, what we found out was that the Temiskaming Forestry Alliance that has the, uh, most of the control over here is just coming to the end of its uh, cutting period and some of these companies now are uh, free and able to, and they're working in the area. They have scouted these uh, blocks that the town owns and they've put a value onto them. They've come forward and said, would the town be interested in uh, putting these blocks up for harvesting? We took a look at it. We brought back a consultant to say, can you give us what, an estimation of what the uh, cubic meters are, what the value would be, um, what else we should consider. His report came back and he said, again, stick with the Winnie Lake uh, proposal, keep that area and where the shoreline and that, keep it away from uh, being cut. 16 and 15 on the map there are the ones that are of uh, prime interest. They are not, beautiful pieces of land. I walked through 16 and how you can walk through there without breaking your neck is a, a challenge. Uh, it's pretty rough. 
Um, a consultant also recommended that you look at Block 17, TK17 up above, around Clear Aqua, and put that forward because the uh, again the the stand uh, the timber stands are very mature and would be of interest and basically what are they going to do if they keep getting older they're going to fall down and create a fire hazard so we looked at that we brought it back uh, to council in this report asking council would you like or would you entertain the uh, uh, harvesting of timber in these areas our proposal would be as per the land management agreement that in any activity we go back to the public we hold public sessions and we bring that feedback into the process feedback from the public both from the L, uh, sorry the, F, the original management plan as well as public uh, consultation subsequent would form part of the RFP that they have to address these kind of concerns issues that have been raised over the course well you know why don't you just sell them and you get uh, tax uh, dollars? I, I looked at a comparative lot and it came in at 175 a year. So, okay, that's not lots. Uh, what about uh, selling these lots and they're going to be developed into cottages or something like that? That's very questionable. Uh, some cottage developments or private developments did occur in that area and it I, I don't know how successful it has been. There has been concerns about access by, via road. Um, in some cases, the trails or whatever were shut down or uh, forced to move. If we hold on to the land, perhaps then we can offer at least a different corridor for uh, the snowmobile club, et cetera, if something like that happens again. Basically, let's look at it from the public interest. What can we do? And if it's not worth it, we'll report that to council and we'll back off. Councillor Barker. Forestry is one of the few renewable resources we have uh, to work with, and I really like that. Um, with forestry comes fire prevention, but also have some um, some interesting offshoots, such as berries and other opportunities for other economic development, and um, leisure op opportunities, as well as hunting. Um, land development once it has been harvested, potential for roadways and stuff like that. So I'm in full favor of uh, exploring this opportunity and capitalizing right now on our uh, on our asset. Councillor Morgan. Thanks, Tony. <clears throat> Wolf, um, you alluded to it in your earlier in your preamble that uh, we've been dealing with this for a significant length of time. And there's been uh, several occasions where this has come to public meetings to talk about it. So there's nothing there's nothing confidential here. I mean this is all something that's been done uh, well in the open. So we've already had you know, significant public awareness of, of doing this. And uh, certainly I'm not, I'm not against any, you know, additional public consultation that, you know, that's always good, but it's not that it hasn't uh, been done to some extent. Um, the other thing, and, and Tom alluded to it, is that forestry is renewable resource, much, you know, unlike, you know, mining, uh, I hate to say it, but it's not a renewable resource. Um, <laughs> The plan that you developed, Wolf, I believe it included reforestation elements to it. If you could elaborate, please. Yes, um, it, it was mandated by the MNR, and it's only a good practice. Uh, regeneration has to be part of the contract. Uh, also, in terms of what kind of harvesting, we would be looking for certified good practices for stewardship council or so. Uh, in addition, we would be looking at um, minimizing the inter uh, intervention of the municipality itself. We'd be looking at a contract similar to what was done in Coleman. Here it is, do it all and give us our dollars when we will simply make sure that you're following all the rules in accordance with the MNR. If that means bringing in a contractor again just to review that because it is past uh, beyond our uh, technical knowledge, we will do, it, do so and pay from that amount so you know based on all of that I'm still in favor of this I mean I was in favor of it when we first launched this I thought it was a good idea because it is a renewable resource there's going to be revenue now there's going to be revenue for the municipality way down the road again uh, hopefully we can schedule some of this so that it's not a big lump but I mean I understand if that's if that's the reality I mean the trees grow at their own 
leisure, not at, uh, at our uh, schedule. Um, and uh, the other element that we talked about when we were doing this resource assessment was also um, aggregates. Mm -hmm. And as we've seen, you know, as Ashley's had to deal with, we've seen multiple uh, aggregate um, permits be uh, uh, come to fruition in the in the neighborhood. And I'm just wondering if we can't continue down that path as well. And and certainly make them, you know, make make council, make the town aware of them, and then we can decide at that point in time how we, you know, mm -hmm. uh, peel them out, whether it's uh, on a, on a uh, auction, whether it's uh, uh, what have you, or whether we just don't go forward with it at all. I mean, if they're in sensitive areas, obviously council's going to be uh, concerned about that, but um, I think there's another excellent opportunity to uh, to develop and to ex uh, exploit uh, potential aggregate within the municipality as well. Mm -hmm. so. Great. Councillor Kiley. Yeah, just uh, <clears throat> to clarify, uh, clear cutting is banned in Ontario. Is that correct? I, I believe it is. I uh, think that it has to be sustainable harvesting. And yeah. What exactly that means, I don't think that clear cutting in the old fashioned uh, sense that it was a, a barren desert is still allowed. Okay, good to know. Uh, secondly, uh, somebody uh, contacted me today. I, I'm looking at the map, it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. So, just to clarify, the area up by the trails, uh, we're not going to be looking at that area to start cutting forest the, trees? The onus will be on um, any proponent to get the agreement of the uh, snowmobile club and what is done, how it's done, and where. So we would be protecting as much as we could there. Yeah, I'm we referring more to the walking trails and ski trails. Uh, in that area, there's yeah. a road that goes through, but I wasn't aware of too many other trails that were rough ones. No, but behind mm -hmm. the complex and whatnot. Oh, no, we're not no, near there. We're not going there. Oh, no, no, we're, okay. um, this is, yeah, sorry. I just uh, want that clarified. Yeah, my, uh, just to clarify, we're going north of Swastika, so we're, we'll okay. be fine. Yeah. Good, thank you. Y yes, that's a good point, actually. I want to uh, just build on it. As part of the forest management plan, that whole area around the complex was identified as being of uh, a community concern, and it was not, it, it basically chose to stay away from it. Uh, just one question: When um, <clears throat> when the cutting is done, is there like a uh, a time limit to reforest? The uh, it's uh, mandated by MNR and by the seasons too. They, these companies do this all the time. They will be doing it as appropriate, and it would be still part of the contract. It would be enforced within that. Okay. I have a motion that's moved by Councillor Roman. Seconded by Councillor Morgan. The Council directs the Acting Chief Administrative Officer to initiate a process to harvest timber on municipally owned lands, including public consultations and the release of a subsequent request for proposal. All in favor? It's carried. That's unanimous. Okay, item 6 2 uh, Provincial Mine Rescue Competition request to use snow dump. Joanne, you're going to speak to that? This was a request that uh, came into town staff um, from the workplace or work safety north out of Sudbury. They're asking to use the snow dump for part of the provincial mine rescue competitions that will be held here in Kirkland Lake on this Friday, which is uh, the June 8th. So they will be providing proof of insurance to us, and uh, we're suggesting that an agreement <coughs> of use, much like the ones that are similar to the snow drag race, be put into place. So I have a resolution. It's moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Roman. The Council approves the execution of a, an agreement with Workplace Safety North for use of the Goodfish, snow, Goodfish Road snow dump for part of the Provincial Mine Rescue Competitions on Friday, June the 8th. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried, unanimous, thank you. Item B. Okay, the next item uh, was a request that's come in from um, Kirkland Lake Minor Hockey Association. They've been contacted by um, 
a sponsor, spo somebody who sponsors through the Temiskaming Foundation. It's called One Foot Forward, the Zubik Fund, and they're looking to, um, they're asking for the town to co-sponsor an application to them in the amount of $5,000 in which the town will then uh, forward on a donation to Kirk Lake Minor Hockey. Any discussion? All in favor? Moved by Councillor Roman, seconded by Councillor Morgan, that Council approves the request to co-sponsor a funding application with Kirkland Lake Minor Hockey Association to One Foot Forward Zubik Fund through the Temiskaming Foundation. Additional discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, item 6-3, Manager of Planning and Land Management. Ashley, you're going to speak on uh, the awarding uh, waste contract to successful bidder. And uh, then you'll follow that up with the Main Street uh, Revitalization Initiative. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, <clears throat> If I, if I may, I'd like to uh, uh, just uh, chime in a little bit before we get into the, uh, to the report. Um, we, we won't be looking for, uh, for a decision tonight. However, we will be back on the 19th council meeting and we'll be looking for a decision in bylaw. Um, the rationale of, council, uh, of staff for that was to afford council an opportunity to digest the information and make a uh, informed decision. Um, secondly, I'd like to chime in and uh, commend uh, our current uh, service provider. Uh, we've received nothing but positive feedback from our community and uh, the collection staff itself uh, for a phenomenal job that, uh, that our current provider is uh, providing to the community. And now we'll get to the, the actual report and that's the to award the Waste Collection and Disposal Curbside uh, Recycling Contract Project Number RFP 50318. The recommendation is that Council considering awarding the, the Waste Collection Disposal Curbside Recycling Contract to Municipal Waste and Recycling Consultants, otherwise known as NWRC, for a five-year term with options for one and two-year extensions. The budgetary numbers that were presented to the public in March at the budget open house were as follow. Landfill collection disposal, 1.4 million. Uh, recycling collection, 400,000. Total annually, 1.8 million. For over a five year term, $9 million. As you can see on the report, there's the numbers, there's the three proponents that we uh, received bids from, and you can see the variance in the, uh, in the numbers at the, at the bottom. It's also important to note that with that budget figure, should council decide to award the contract, any of the above contractors, there will be a savings in the budget. Um, the background, um, we're currently we're, we're spending around $73,550 a month on an interim basis until July 31st with an option for a two-month ex extension until we can establish this new five-year contract. Uh, the RFP opening took place May 8th. Uh, there were three submissions, and you've received that as per uh, Schedule A. Uh, the bidding breakdown of the collection of waste and residential recycling separate from landfill operations. The evaluation of the three submissions took place in a two-tier system analyzing the technical submissions first and costs after the fact. The contractors were evaluated based on criteria set out in the RFP section 6.7 table 1 evaluation criteria, a copy of which is attached to Schedule B of this report. Based on the evaluation completed, as per Schedule C of this report, the uh, recommendation, recommended contractor is Municipal Waste and Recycling Consultants with a bid of 
$46.15 or $992,889.20. So annually. What they're proposing to do, they're proposing to use a fully automated system um, which entails uh, one driver in a truck with a sidearm that will reach out nine feet, grab your cart, bring it in, dump, move on to the next. Um, we've had several concerns uh, with that system, uh, so we've, we've asked the questions. Um, being snow placement, uh, uh, narrow streets in wintertime. Mostly the questions revolved around wintertime and bin placement. Um, collection out of uh, commercial storage sheds, uh, because we currently allow storage sheds for a lot of commercial properties. Um, and the uh, little blue boxes that uh, a lot of people use, how would they manage the collection for these? No problem, can be done manually the same as it is today. Um, we've um, asked them about uh, offices and, and things like that. They, they do have a, a location in Kirkland Lake at uh, 60 Huston Bay that they're proposing to uh, either buy or lease off the uh, present owner. Um, a soft start to the program to help educate the public on proper cart placement. Um, you need a minimum space between, between the carts and other objects so the mechanical arm can effectively pick them up and, and dump them into the vehicle. Um, challenges that we've, we've asked were uh, laneways. Is this thing going to be able to go up and down laneways? Uh, no problem. Um, so uh, with that said, we've reached out to other municipalities that, that do have this system, such as Timmins and Timiskaming Shores, and there's uh, no issue. Uh, it was a little shaky at the start, but once people started putting their carts where they needed to be, there's no problem with the, uh, the collection. Um, we've reached out to communities that they're currently um, servicing. Uh, uh, one's Sault Ste. Marie, one's Elliott Lake, uh, one, uh, there's the Tri Neighbors down in the Blind River area, there's three little communities. Um, they've offered up nothing but praise and satisfaction. Um, they've been collecting waste and, and doing landfill operations for these communities, some of them for 18, 20 years. Other ones, you know, seven years. Uh, never a problem, never a concern for health and safety. They've always been willing to work with uh, their communities as well as the, uh, the staff uh, that's in uh, waste management to uh, alleviate any issues or problems and have a smooth uh, uh, delivery service. Uh, further to that, um, we'd like to make mention that there could be further reductions in the budget by re reducing the service to bi-weekly garbage collection during the winter months, being every two weeks, um, and phasing out the uh, the collection and disposal from commercial properties. Now, that's that's a recommendation that was in the KPMG report. We just bring it forward today. It may be an opportune time to uh, to look at that. Um, in addition to the the RFP evaluation, staff have also reviewed cost analysis that have been provided to council in the past um, relating to bring service in-house. Um, in summary, the, the estimated cost would be around a million dollars if, uh, if the municipality was to do the, uh, the collecting and the disposal at the landfill site. Um, if this is an option council would like to consider, it is recommended we hire a consultant to help us uh, get everything in order and uh, have the numbers correct uh, the equipment that we would require uh, and uh, absolutely the uh, landfill operations uh, right now aren't we doing that ourselves that is correct uh, 
what's the advantage cost wise right for us now doing it? can we handle it uh, that uh, was a consideration I, I didn't we, we can that. certainly consider that uh, right now we're, we're, we're coming in um, you know around thirty thousand dollars a month uh, to run the landfill um, <clears throat> However, we're, we're releasing equipment and we're, we're hiring um, uh, stuff from, from other um, service providers on a, on, on a weekly basis uh, per hour to help us with uh, sand hauling and different things. Uh, in, in order for us to, to effectively be able to do the landfill in-house, we'd, uh, we'd have to see everything that's involved. It, we'd have to run it for at least a year. Um, I would suggest hiring a consultant for that too, to, to ensure that we're, we're abiding by all the, the regulations, rules, things like that, that, that may be out there. Um, besides the MOECC, uh, we'd have to procure our own equipment and, uh, and, and uh, ensure we have enough staffing to, uh, to, to maintain the landfill and, and, and keep the life of the landfill as well. So we are using some of our own equipment now plus? Uh, absolutely not. It's all yeah, yeah. contracted out. It's uh, we we have so. one piece that we're leasing from uh, from Battlefield, but we don't own it. <clears throat> so we don't really know what those costs would we, be without doing some kind of a study. That's right. We'd have to really study it. We'd have to really, uh, you know, uh, make sure that we have the the proper equipment for landfilling, and that one major piece is a landfill compactor. If you can't reach your, your, your compaction density, then you, you lessen the life of your, your landfill dramatically um, because you're not getting that. that uh, you know, ideally, we look at uh, 1,200 uh, pounds per square yard of compaction density, and if, if we can't achieve that, then you're going to lose your landfill. Uh, how many Town of Kirk Lake staff do we have working at the landfills? Site we, right now. we have one that we hired, a loader operator, and we have one uh, tipping attendant each day. And myself, of course. So we haven't really added much in staff, <coughs> but we're subcontracting out a lot of stuff. That's right. Okay. Okay. Councillor Shamiard. Yeah, so basically that, that would be almost, I mean, 38,000 times 12 is 360, and the contract's about 400,000 a year, so. You're not saving a lot. Yeah, there's not much difference. We're not saving a lot. Uh, no. what, what I'm missing in this record that I would have liked to have is what would be the cost for every two weeks garbage pickup? Not just the winter, the, the whole year. Uh, this is what's being done mostly everywhere. Uh, now we're one of the town that's going only one, every week. Um, mm. The idea is to try to reduce garbage, not to get more, um, and up the recycling, really. Um, we're a bit doing it backward. I um, I quoted a little spot in the um, in the report under uh, uh, negotiations. Um, we're not permitted to to discuss those things until we have a successful bit, uh, proponent. So once we select our council selects uh, a successful proponent, then we'll be permitted to uh, to enter into those types of negotiations. Should council be desirous of that. And uh, I've, I've got our uh, procurement pr pr professional with us this evening to, to help answer those, those types of questions if, if one comes up where I can't answer yeah, it. But that could have been put in the RFP to start with. It, it could have been, but we didn't want to complicate the RFP as was done in the past. We, uh, uh, you know, we just wanted something that was straightforward and with the option to do negotiations after the fact. Wow. Councilor Roman. Um, just a couple of quick questions. Um, for, first of all, when, when you're talking about the uh, budget amount versus the proposed um, contract that we're looking at, wh which number was included in the budget that we discussed earlier? Unfor unfortunately, uh, yeah, please do. <laughs> Okay, so what I did there was actually took into consideration the actual costs up until I think it was <clears throat> April, May. I think what the last one that month that was posted was March, so I 
took our um, landfill operating costs that we did internally for, you know, ran the numbers for April, May, June, up until the end of July where a new contract would be established and I took the lowest bidder out of this contract to form the remainder. So and so if you don't go with, with the lowest bidder in here, the budget mm -hmm. numbers that were presented tonight would go up. Okay. Sorry, they would go up for this year or you mean? They'd go up a bit this year because you'd still have August, September, October, November, December by, I guess, I think it works out to being, how much was it a month? 80, uh, it's around 82,000, $83,000 a month. Okay, then, so we are looking at an increase then. Well, it, it depends on which way you look at it. So the March 23rd numbers that were presented at the open house, well, we're seeing a reduction from that. From that. But no matter what, who we pick, yeah. But what about the budget numbers that were presented tonight? They're based on the lowest bidder. They're based on the lowest bidder. So if we go with the lowest bidder, we, we aren't looking at additional savings then. Okay. Um, another question. Um, Oh, w with respect to what uh, Jean-Guy brought up, I, I, I would be in favor of um, negotiating um, a, a cost to go to uh, garbage collection every second week. Not, not that we would do that initially, but to have that in our back pocket should we want to go that direction in, in the next five years. Um, now, um, with, with respect to the equipment, this side loading equipment, um, you're, you're saying it has a nine foot reach. Is that nine foot now, are, are we looking at the same level as the truck? Can this thing... Um, is, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. If you sit your garbage on top of the snow bank, say, can, can it get it up there or does it have to be it, a tire level? It's not going to be able to reach up like, like that to grab your garbage can, but however, they did mention in... Uh, as regarding snow, should the um, a snow plow go by and happen to plow one of these carts in at the end of the driveway or something like that, this thing can actually go over, reach it, pull it up over that, and then bring it in, and then put it back. Okay, so it has a little bit of a gi of give. I'm just not sure exactly. I've I've never seen one work myself. I've seen a video of the the one they use in Timmins. It's on their website. Uh, just for your for, uh, for your information, you can, you can go on the Timmins website and uh, Waste Management, and they have a YouTube video of, uh, of their uh, side collection unit, which is very similar to the one they're proposing. Okay, I, I will take a look at that. Um, l last question I had was, um, we're, we're down to a one-man operation now for garbage collection. Um, uh, uh, right now, I see, the, the, when, when they do their collection, there's a lot of three-point turns and backing up, and uh, is there going to be any issues with that at all? Um, we've, we've asked the questions. They came back, said there's no issues with that. Uh, as they, they deal with similar challenges in other communities. However, you know, they would educate um, work and work with, the, with us and, and the community to uh, try and come up with solutions if it does become a, a, a problem. Okay, thanks. Councillor Kiley. Yeah, Richard, we haven't uh, gone to the uh, commercial uh, pickup uh, consideration. Uh, we awards, <coughs> excuse me, we award uh, preferred contractor We've lost some negotiation power here, I think, when that happens, because <clears throat> first of all, right now, uh, a considerable number of our commercial industrial uh, tenants in, or landowners in Kirk and Lake are using FIPPIN in, in uh, New Liskert. and. I don't know how he's ever going to figure out how much penetration he's going to get from the, the existing uh, commercial customers because if he drops the rate that will, they'll switch back. Uh, so that's going to be a difficult uh, 
hill to climb to figure out what is reasonable, what we're going to get out of it in reduction as, as well. I wouldn't want that this company to be looking at 100% that he's going to do all the commercial because we still haven't decided whether we're going to do commercial by the town or it's up to the uh, property owner. So it's it's a big question mark there. Councillor Chamiard. I think commercial is included in this, eh? Yeah. Uh, in this, yeah. The commercials, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's included. And uh, what they would do is they'd have to, uh, uh, they'd have to collect data yeah. on how many commercial properties there is, how many is receiving collection, how many is not receiving collection. And, and, and I then, think Pippin mostly does, from what I see, they mostly do recycling, I think. Uh, no, they do, uh, the, they do waste as do well. Some waste also. Because yeah. I know a lot of people have recycling, they have those big uh, bin there. Yellow bin or whatever. When uh, when the, when when we went to the cart program, a lot of them uh, switched over to, to to that because there was the threat that uh, the, the commercial properties may not receive collection. So a lot of them just went ahead and right. and, and got their own, because similar to what is happening. Like you said, in this, some still have their little little bin set up, and people have to get out and yeah, do it by yeah, hand. And, and and that would be done still. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I know. that was uh, one of the questions raised, and uh, they said no problem. Yeah, and and those bins are good for what with the other arm coming out, I think. Eh? The bins we have, the black bins, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you guys yeah, checked that. Yeah, for the uh, sure. yeah, they work. Yeah. All right. Yeah, um, yeah Pat. I think um, I, I don't think. Well, I mean, you guys could do whatever you want. I don't think I would stop recycling. To, uh, I mean, picking up garbage for the business uh, for all kind of reasons. Um, I mean, they pay a lot of tax, and we thought I already talk about this today. As they may, I don't know how many have their own own collection that I don't know. But even if they they still they were still limited to an amount of garbage to pick up, um, like like they, they couldn't get just a big box. If there was a box and they had to be measured to fit about the size of a. Of a In, initially, that's that's the way it was anticipated, but that's not how it worked out. Oh, I don't know. It was never it was never passed. Uh, to, to go that route, uh, there was we did an open house and there was a, very, a lot of very negative feedback on that issue and uh, and then we the KPMG re report came out and uh, that kind of answered the, the questions. Yeah, like I'm I'm happy the way it's going right now. I don't know if I want to change the service we're doing, except maybe going like Jim said every two weeks. Uh, I've been on this for a while now, mm -hmm. and I think that's the way to go. Councillor Kiley. Yes, I agree on the bi-weekly pickup, uh, John Gee. I guess <clears throat> from the commercial aspect, you're taking as if we're going to continue as is. And I don't know what consideration, we don't know what the impact is from a budget standpoint, what the contractor's built in for doing commercial. Whether he just took the number of commercial units in Kirk Lake and said, okay, it's X number of dollars for each one but he's not going to get them all obviously some of them are doing it like the big box stores like timmy's and canadian tar are doing their own uh, foodland independent uh, i still think we need to know what impact that would have i'm not saying we're going that route but we're one of the few communities that are left uh, doing commercial uh, I'd, I'd like to know the dollar impact so just, just so I'm, I'm clear with your request, uh, you, you, you want to know the difference between if they, if, they took, if they took commercial off, how much it would cost? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Basically. Yeah. At least we have a more of an informed decision, Rick. Yeah. Councillor Morgan. Just uh, to, to clarify, Rick, by the way, the very good presentation tonight. Um, do we have to do this now? Like, do we have to go to bi-weekly now? Do we have to go to take the commercial out now? This can be negotiated at any point during the contract. Is, that, is that what the way <coughs> I understand it? I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe Gary might know. I, I, I don't know. I don't even know if we, can, if we can go to 
the proponent uh, being the lowest bidder and, and ask him those questions without him being awarded the contract. Um, those are those are some some things we you know Gary might be able to chime in on that. Okay, and I'll I'll tell you where I'm going with this is that, and and Jean Guy alluded to it. Uh, you know our commercial taxpayers in Kirkland Lake are already you know under significant pressure from our from the tax situation in Kirkland, and uh, to take this away, maybe it's the right thing to do. Maybe it's you know going to get mandated to us. But if we do do this, we need to telegraph this way in advance of actually doing it so that these people have lots of time to put other arrangements in place. We can't, like we saw this last time when we were, um, previous staff were, you know, kept switching back and forth between collecting, not collecting, and, 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 uh, and, and you know, people were, were really getting agitated by it because it's a significant undertaking for them. They need to make other arrangements. They need to, you know, the other out-of-town contractors or whatever it is. So um, if we're talking about taking commercial out at the beginning of this contract, I don't want any part of it. Absolutely uh, not. And, um, and so if, but if we're, you know, if we're going to take it out in a year's time or whatever, then we can talk about that. I'm okay with that. You know, as long as there's a long telegraphed span of time to, to deal with that. Um, and I know like going to uh, bi-weekly collection of the waste is also you know, in vogue. Um, we live in an area with these, you know, furry critters that like to roam around at night uh, causing all kinds of havoc in the summertime, not there in the wintertime. So I'm totally okay with it doing it in the wintertime. We, as we saw during our uh, service uh, modification, if you will, uh, where we went several weeks and I was able to go almost three weeks without uh, emptying my garbage can but it's in the winter time. I don't know if I'd want to experiment with that in the middle of the summer when there's lots of uh, things roaming around my backyard. So anyhow, that's just my two cents. Uh, me, the, the landfill, uh, right now we do it ourselves. Uh, we have a, a toll person at the toll gate there and uh, we have a, an operator. Uh, if we were to go contract it out, um, then we wouldn't need the operator. Is that yeah. so? We'd reduce one staff at the landfill. Okay. Um, with regards to the bi-weekly, um, would we be going to bi-weekly? What would be the purpose? Would the purpose be to reduce the garbage going to the landfill, or would the purpose be to reduce the cost to the taxpayers? I would. I would suppose it's both. Mm -hmm. It's both. Um, uh, waste reduction is a. It's a huge thing. Um, we're going to see uh, in the next few years huge, huge mandates coming down from uh, from the government, uh, depending on the, the election, of course. But right now, there's they're they're uh, they're putting through uh, legislation that's going to institute landfill bans. You won't be able to bring cardboard out there anymore. Deal with your cardboard. Uh, that's commercial properties as well. Uh, uh, since we've taken over the landfill site and operating it internally, I, I see a lot of things, and I'm I'm almost taken aback by the amount of certain things that are are going into our landfill that shouldn't be. Um, however, that's that's the nature of the beast that we're presented with right now. So we'll be going bi-weekly. We'd actually be asking people to reduce their garbage consumption by half. And, and what happens to the people that are unable to reduce their garbage consumption by half and can only put out one bin of garbage? So are we going to go back to, you have a bin and if you have a little bit more, you can put the bag beside and, and or are we going to go, are we going to get more bins? Uh, that's why I'm asking, like there might be expense. Uh, so I'm just, what happens to somebody that needs more than one bin for the two weeks? We're, uh, um, we're hoping it to reduce the waste if you went with a bi-weekly, yeah. not, not encourage more bins. Um, um, we, we do have unlimited recycling. You, you can have, you know, six recycling carts out there. Um, uh, we, we do encourage through, through our office uh, composting. 
uh, and other waste reduction initiatives. We, we um, Jenna is uh, is very very good at uh, doing uh, public announcements and different things to to encourage the different times of the year waste reduction and recycling, um, and that's that's and that's mandated on us through the provincial government because they are moving in a in a direction where they want little to no waste going in a landfill site. It's going to be up to to us producers and different uh, entities that produce garbage to deal with it in different ways. Yeah, I just want you to consider that before, you know, just thinking it's uh, it's easy to go from one to two weeks uh, because there are people that can't that can't get through and 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 I don't think we want to see a bag I mean we went through that for 30 years here with the mm -hmm. seagulls and everything else mm -hmm. um, so I would just hope that you would take that into con into consideration so this is something that Rick actually found from other municipalities examples and we were looking at this last year uh, when discussing the commercial and potentially going bi-weekly and just analyzing whether or not that's an option uh, other municipalities do have these six-month um, exemptions. So if you have, let's say, a dependent, somebody who's needing to be wearing diapers or uh, even children with diapers, you have that extra allotment of a container, but you'd have to renew it every six months. So anybody with a child under the age of three would get an extra container to deal with the, the, the waste that you're creating or anybody who's dealing with a, an adult dependent that is, you know, you're not having that stuff sit in your... So, so it sounds good, it's a good idea, so there, but on, on, on the child's fourth birthday, mm -hmm. would we be going to the house to pick up the bin? Yeah. I mean, that, that's where all the issues start, right? I mean, it all sounds great, but mm -hmm. we just have to really give it lots of consideration. I guess the last question I have is, is um, you know, it, it's always, we look at uh, out-of-town contractors coming in. Uh, out-of-town contractors that come in to do a service soon become a part of our community, but there's always questions raised when we go out of town and we take a contractor from out of town. But what, I guess the question I'm asking is, is what would we save over a year between the first and the second bidder? It's approximately 400,000 annually. About 400,000? Yeah. Okay. okay, that was my questions, thank you. Yeah, about the recycling, uh, about the garbage. I think, Rick, I read somewhere that the government will mandate the amount of garbage you're allowed in a year for the size of town you are. Isn't there something about this coming down? Or There's, there's like I chimed in a little earlier, there's a lot of legislation coming yeah. down. Um, it's got to go through the process of, of becoming law. Um, but it's, it's being pushed. It's being pushed. Yeah, totally. If you, even if you want people to have four cards, the problem will say, no, 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 you're not allowed. You only allow yeah. so many, uh, is it pound or cubic? I don't know how you measure it. Anyway, yeah. you only allow so much a year, and that's all you allow. Yeah, to, I, I, I go into the land, 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 yeah. landfill. So it's not like we can do whatever we want. No, no, I understand so that we fully. We have to get people to get cut on garbage. That's, I understand that fully. That's an important all thing. I'm saying is that for staff to give it careful, careful, careful consideration before. It sounds good, cut it for two weeks. It's, everything sounds good until we have to go out and do it. So I, I think we have to give very careful consideration to any drastic moves that we do with the garbage collection. Mm -hmm. Councillor Kiley. Yeah, in relation to that <coughs> excess garbage, I know other communities, uh, my daughter just lives outside of Ottawa, and the municipality out there you have your, your bin, anything over and above that, you pick up these tags, it's a buck a buck uh, bag or whatever it is. So that's that's how they handle it. So do we uh, just put, what do we do with that bag? Like we put it out it, at night with the, with the can outside, and let the yeah, birds come back? Yeah, it's outside of So the, it's more of a revenue generator than anything else. You know, um, it just give it the consider, considerable consideration. I, I guess one other question, uh, was Rick, uh, <clears throat> of the three bids, is there anything that stood out with uh, MWRC that they would do over and above what the other bidders had? Every, uh, every submission came in uh, um, with their technical and I gotta tell you that they were all 
pretty comparable to to one another on their on their technical on on what they 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 would like to do what they would plan to do um, there's a lot of things that they they may like to do that doesn't involve the contract um, if they if they decide they want to um, go go elsewhere you know maths and Raymore places like that you know they're free to do so um, but uh, as far as value-added service I can't uh, I can't chime in because it's not on the top of my head right now so they're fairly equal but they're they're all yeah they were all it was a very hard evaluation actually Thank you. Councilor Shamiard uh, Rick like did you did you check um, for example, the cost of garbage and recycling separated? No, you only took them as one thing. Eh? Yeah, and uh, also Because we, you would not look at one guy doing garbage, one guy going recycling. That's right, one contract. And uh, we also put into the RFP. Right now, we, the, the municipality has to pay for the, uh, the, the fees to have the recycling uh, dealt with. Um, we won't, we will no longer have to. Yeah, that's not there, yeah. Uh, we, that, it's not yeah. up to us to find out the, uh, the, 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 the facilities to, to ship this to. It's gonna be up to the proponent, be it any one of them, um, to find out where they wanna ship that stuff to. 37,000. Yeah. We would have 37,000 in right? savings right there. But would we, we pay that bill though, don't we? we that's free to, and like, like I was saying, it's about 37,000 uh, bucks in savings. It's moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Roman, that Council directs the Acting Chief Administrative Officer to bring back a bylaw to the June 19th regular meeting for Council to consider a contract for waste collection and disposal and curbside recycling with Municipal Waste and Recycling Consultants. All in favour? Okay, uh, item uh, 6.3b is the Main Street revitalization. <coughs> Ashley, are you going to speak on that? Hi, yeah, just really quickly. Um, this is a request to proceed with signing the municipal funding agreement for the Main Street revitalization initiative. So this is a, um, a portion of money, so 44705 dollars that is being provided to the town to dedicate towards Main Street revitalization initiatives. Uh, we don't have to match a dollar figure to that; it's just ours to use. Uh, it's something that we can use in, as a portion of municipal funds for further funding if we'd like. Uh, it's supposed to be dedicated either towards. Uh, priority items that are identified in the community improvement plan, which we currently don't have, or uh, fi uh, infrastructure projects such as signage, streetscaping, landscaping improvements, marketing plan implementations, or accessible uh, things that could be done. So we have up until March 31st, 2020 to spend these this fund. So at this point, all we're doing is um, accepting the money, signing the agreement that we are going to proceed with putting this towards a project. There's no need at this point to allocate it directly to a project. Uh, at this time, we thought um, with our capital plan that was presented tonight at council, there's a couple of elements within that capital plan that this could likely go towards. Uh, there's the accessible, it's a year one of two accessible, uh, accessible parking and um, sidewalk <coughs> rehabilitation plan. And this is based on a walkthrough, I think, with Judy Thompson that took place, I believe, last fall uh, to do some re uh, re retrofits to the sidewalks that are there that are causing accessibility concerns. It's also to um, put in the three accessible parking spaces that were passed by council last year in bylaw form but have not actually seen formation on the street. Uh, so we thought perhaps that would be a good use of this $44,000. The other was the handrails uh, downtown to coincide with the 2019 100 year anniversary to replace the handrails downtown. We have it in our capital budget this year. Uh, so it, that again would, would um, be a good fit for this project. So at this point we're not looking at pinpointing exactly where that goes, I don't think, right Wolf? Right, so it's just a matter of knowing that we do have $44,000 there to to use for initiatives over the next couple of years if we so choose. We would 
bring it forward to you um, as to once we know what the costs are, et cetera. One of the thoughts, though, as Ashley said, we have the 100th anniversary coming up. We have a two-year program to improve the accessibility, specifically sidewalks, et cetera, that have impact on every business and every user. Uh, if we use that money, we can accelerate that program and be ready for the 100th anniversary, deal with a major problem, be over and done with. Uh, Councillor Chamillard. Yeah, uh, Ashley, can we, like the flowers were cut this year, I think, from mm -hmm. budget. Can we not take some of this um, minimal um, as landscaping? Uh, I'd have to see exactly whether that would meet the criteria, as long as it's like we're not talking landscaping about improvements. Yeah, yeah, it may be We're not able talking to about a lot of money, but I thought that was sad. That, I mean, what? a lot of people mentioned the flowers. Yeah. And I know it, it's uh, close to Heart of Joanne and a lot of people in town. The flowers are going to be out. Uh, Joanne's had some Everywhere, great, Joanne? great results on uh, on uh, local uh, people coming up, and the flowers will be downtown just like they had been in okay, other years. Okay, thanks, Tony. Ni nice to hear. Yep. We'll, we'll give an update to you on. Yep. Okay, because really, all we can do is buy the flowers, and there's always people ready to. Yep. And the flags will the flags be changed regularly again, or? Mm -hmm. uh, that yeah. I'm not sure of because I do know the hundredth anniversary is working on. Yeah. Don't, don't, up yeah. don't, the one thing I did see on the flags this year, which I thought was a great idea, I seen one side of the road, I seen Northern College, mm -hmm. and I seen on the other side, I seen Community Living, which was yeah. sort of doing two birds with one stone, uh, uh, which was a great idea, and uh, that might be one of the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, as we go into, the, we're, I guess, book fall now for 2018. As we go into 2019, we'll bring back for Council's consideration different uh, approaches to it. Um, Certainly, the municipality is not going to walk away from uh, the basic beautification, and that would be the flags that we need for spring and summer, or sorry, summer and winter. But if we get requests from others in the future, we may want to consider giving it over to them to put it up, as opposed to an, a, or including the cost in a user fee. That's we'd like to bring back a number of different scenarios for council's consideration as to how we handle that. Thank you, Wolf. Thank you, Joanne. Good news. Thank, thanks, Andy. Uh, the downtown as well, improvement, uh, uh, just as an example, somebody wants a couple gallons of paint to paint the front of their storefront. Is that part of this or yes, no? The just so people know. Yes, so no, not right now. The only okay. way that would become applicable is if we had a community improvement plan and the community improvement plan specifically listed as a priority facade improvements. Then we could then we could make some sort of um, application process for those individuals to apply to get money for facade improvements that was dedicated out of this fund. But okay. we have no community improvement plan, yep. so no. It's just, you know, for, for, for a couple gallons of paint, you can sure make the downtown look a lot mm -hmm. better than some of the stores. Just a thought. Okay. That's going to be a bylaw. Thanks, Ashley. Okay. Uh, item seven. Okay. Moved by Councillor Roman, seconded by Councillor Morgan. The bylaw 18-085 being a bylaw to authorize mayor and clerk to execute a site plan control agreement for 521 government road west be read a first second and third time and acted and passed all in favor it's carried thank you it's moved by councillor morgan seconded by councillor roman that bylaw 18-087 being a bylaw to amend the 2018 user fee bylaw for contract signage or storage bins on public road allowance be read a first, second, and third time, and acted and passed. All in favor? It's carried, thank you. It's moved by Councillor Roman, seconded by Councillor Morgan, that bylaw 18-088, being a bylaw to stop up, close, and declare surplus the laneway south of lots 12 to 16 of plan M135 between Federal and Grierson, be read a first, second, and third time, and acted and passed. All in favor? It's carried, thank you. Moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Roman. The bylaw 18-089 uh, being a bylaw to authorize mayor and clerk to execute a municipal funding agreement for Ontario's Main Street Revitalization Initiative. Be read a first, second, and third time, and acted and passed. All in favor? It's carried, thank you. It's moved by Councillor Roman, seconded by Councillor Morgan. The bylaw 18-090 being a bylaw to authorize mayor and clerk to execute a site plan control agreement for 1360 Government Road West. Be read a first, second, and third time and acted and passed. All in favor? 
It's carried, thank you. That's all. Okay, that's it. Uh, notices of motion. Confirmation bylaw. It's moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Roman. The bylaw 18-091 <coughs> being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of Council at its meeting held June 5th, 2018, be read a first, second, and third time and acted and passed. All in favor? Carried, thank you. Councillor's reports. Yeah. Councillor Barker. I'd like to th take this opportunity to thank the community as well as uh, Mayor and Council for the support during Community Living Month. It meant a lot to the agency in creating awareness to the services we provide throughout the community. Um, in particular, the Mayor also um, was there present for our Celebrity Bowl Off where we take time to uh, recognize and acknowledge our community partners and uh, had a great time. So thank you again and uh, it was a great success and we're looking forward to uh, next year. Thank you. Councillor Kiley. Yes, I just wanted to clarify it. <clears throat> just, I don't want to beat this one to death. The commercial garbage pickup. My intent in asking the question of the cost was to, to when a, a commercial or industrial uh, property owner comes to us and is complaining about the high tax rate, is this added value service that is thrown in there. I have no intentions of cutting out commercial garbage or supporting that. That's just wanted to clarify. Okay. I've had the opportunity to attend the um, nursing gala at, uh, at the Legion. It was a, a great evening and uh, we thank the nurses on behalf of council and the residents of Kirkland Lake for, for all that they do. Um, had the uh, opportunity, I think it's the, the um, on Saturday morning out at the airport, the uh, Young Eagles, or is yeah. it, uh, I believe it was the Young Eagles, Eagles yes, yeah. and uh, it was well attended, uh, gave a lot of uh, community children uh, first, uh, first opportunity to see what it's like to fly in a plane and uh, hopefully they, they will uh, plant a, a seed with these children uh, going forward to maybe take up uh, flying. Um, that was uh, certainly want to thank the organizers for that. Uh, I know uh, Rob Murdoch and uh, uh, London Life, uh, Jenny uh, was uh, uh, involved very heavily in that, so we want to thank them uh, for what they did. It's moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Roman. The Council adjourns its regular meeting of June 5th, 2018 to an in-camera meeting to discuss three proposed or pending land acquisition issues. All in favor? It's carried, thank you.